Hey everyone, uh, today I'll be going over leak code problem 1743, restore the array from adjacent pairs. So we have all this junk, but it's actually really simple. So basically we're given some adjacent, adjacent pairs array like this, and it's really just edges. So node 2 is connected to node 1, uh, node 3 is connected to node 4, 3 to 2, so on forth and so forth. We have to come up with an array and restore the array from these edges. So if you can look here, uh, we're given this and we can come up with this because one is connected to two, that's true here. Uh, two is connected to three, uh, that's true here. And three is connected to four, and that's true here. Um, so a couple things to note is uh, this is always going to work out and it's always going to be a valid adjacent to pairs, which means that uh, our result nums is always going to be plus one length of the adjacent to pairs. And they actually say that right here. Um, it's guaranteed that every adjacent pair elements nums i and nums i plus 1 will exist in the adjacent pair. And it'll say that adjacent pair is size n minus 1, where the uh, resulting array is of size n. So a couple things we can do right away is we can have our result, which is just going to be a new int of adjacent pairs uh, dot length plus 1. Uh, just one more length than that. Uh, the next thing we have to do is kind of like build a graph. Uh, to connect these like edge nodes basically so we have to build a graph structure and what we'll do how we'll do that is we'll just have like a map of integer to a list of integers and just call this graph and this will be a new hash map and we'll just build it out so we'll go for int edge of adjacent pairs uh, we have to like connect them so we have to reference uh, the first node with the second node and the second node with the first node so let's actually do that so we'll get get our default so graph dot get or default the first edge node and then a new empty array list uh, if it doesn't exist yet that's why we have to do the get or default thing um, and then what we want to do and we'll call this list uh, we want to just simply add the other edge because it's now a neighbor to that edge right and we have to put it back in so let's actually go uh, graph dot put edge zero uh, to list and let's copy this down because we have to do it for the other node here and let's just go ahead and go like that and let's change that and let's change that and let's change that okay so now that we have our structure here we actually have all the nodes that are connected to each node which means all we have to do is start at a source node, which is really just the node that only has one neighbor. Every other node will have two neighbors, right? Because if we actually look at this output here, um, like so, we'll see that two has two neighbors, one and three. Three has two neighbors. So we can either start at one and four. Order doesn't matter uh, in this problem. Uh, if you look, if there's multiple solutions, we can return any of them. Uh, the pairs can be in any order. So really, we just have to find a source node now. Uh, so how we do that, it's the one that has only one neighbor, right? So let's do a stack for DFS, and we'll have this just be a stack, new stack. And uh, we know that we'll also need this for DFS, so we'll just have scene, which is going to be a new hash set. And not scene, but set. And then what we want to do first is we want to find uh, the source node, right? So we're going to actually go through, basically, uh, for each entry. Uh, which is going to be an integer of list of integers for each entry in our graph uh, so in entry set here basically the one that has only one neighbor right so if and let's call this entry here so if entry dot get value which is just the list that it's mapped to uh, dot size is equal to one that means it's a source node so we can just put this in the stack right off the bat and we can go entry dot get key which is like the starting node and then we can just break and then next what we want to do is we want to iterate through the stack so while not stack is empty uh, we can get the curve so we can go stack dot pop uh, we're going to put this in the scene so that we don't uh, do a cycle and we're going to go scene dot add curve and we're going to go basically uh, through each child so we're going to go for int child or neighbor, you could call it. Uh, let's actually call it neighbor instead. So for each neighbor in graph dot get curve, uh, let's check if we've already seen it. So if not, scene dot contains key neighbor, uh, we can add it. So we can go stack 
dot add neighbor. Okay, so everything's good here. Uh, the thing is, is we're actually DFSing to this, but we're not actually filling up the res. So what we actually want to do is let's have like some uh, variable here to keep track of where we are at in our result array. So uh, once we do this, once we get our curve, we know that this is the current one. So we can go um, res i, and we can also increment it off the bat, and we can go curve. And then at the end here, we can just go ahead and return res. And then I'll reiter reiterate some things that might not make sense uh, once I run this. Um, this is actually contains, not contains key. Uh, let's run this. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's uh, run all the test cases, make sure it's fine before I talk. And uh, let's submit it. So let's see what we got here. Um, so it's 68%, 66%. That's actually pretty good. Um, so let's, let's just reiterate like exactly what happened here. So basically we treated these adjacent pairs as edges. We built a graph out of them. So we mapped every single node to its list of neighbors. Then we found the one with only neighbor one, which will be a start node. Um, and that's because if we actually look at the array we're trying to build, the start node should only have one, and node should only have one neighbor as well, just like an array. Uh, then what we do is we add the one to the stack that only has one neighbor. Then we go through the stack, just normal DFS. You could do this recursively, it doesn't matter. And we increment some i, and we go in order in DFS, and we just fill this array. So we start at the source node, so we know that's the start of the array. And then we go to its neighbor, that's the next one. Then we go to that neighbor, and then that's that. And we do this not seen contains thing because we don't want to have a cycle or anything or add a node we've already seen because each one has actually two neighbors. So we don't want to go backwards. So yeah, uh, talking about time and space complexity, uh, time is actually uh, just O of n. Uh, the reason being is we're actually just going through every single adjacent pair. And adjacent pair is actually bound to the length of the uh, result array, so it's just n. Uh, we just go through that, we build it once, uh, then we do a stack thing here, but since we're actually keeping track of the ones we've seen, we only actually process each node once. So it's really like 2n, which uh, results to n. And then, uh, so this is time, uh, space is actually on as well, uh, for the same reason, because we actually have a map, and we just fill it up n times with the different nodes. So yeah, hope this made sense, thank you for watching.